Hi, and welcome into Real Conversations. I am Thomas Manning with the Real to Real Film Festival in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. So glad today to be joined by Jim Piccarello, the director of The Mushroom Huntress, a really charming short film submission here at Real to Real. So thank you so much, Jim, for taking the time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. And uh, if you just want to start things out and tell us a little bit about your background in filmmaking and uh, just kind of what has led you to where you are right now. Sure. Um, about uh, 10 years ago, I um, got introduced to screenwriting. Uh, my wife bought me a screenwriting book. She thought it would be uh, something I'd be interested in. And I just fell in love with the craft. And after a number of years of trying that and sending it around, you know, screenplays around, I found the uh, uh, wisdom and advice that it's hard to get someone to read your 120 page screenplay, but it's easy to get them to watch your four minute funny short film. So I, uh, I realized that I had to become a filmmaker out of necessity, but I also love it, it turns out. So I, uh, for $100, made a short film called This Time It's Shopping, which I believe played at uh, your festival a number of years ago. And it got into uh, 23 festivals and won five of them. And that got the attention of Sesame Street, where I got to pitch them for a short film. So I got to make a minute and a half short about the number six, six, you know, on Sesame Street. And that was very nice. And then I've made, uh, this is my third film. I made a film before, which also played, I believe, at your festival called Passive Aggressive Dads, which uh, went all over the world. And, and I got to travel with that one. And, um, and now we have The Mushroom Huntress. And we're thrilled to be with you guys again. Yeah, and uh, with The Mushroom Huntress, such a creative and imaginative story. And you really, it's like you've built an entire world, an entire mythology here. So just where did this idea come from? Uh, what kind of inspired you to go about telling the story in this way? Right, so um, the original story was a short story written by our executive producer, Lynn Williams, who is a lawyer up here in the Bar Harbor area, if you happen to know Maine at all. And um, we were friends and she loved my films and she came to me and asked if I'd be willing to direct a short film, film of a larger world and a larger piece that she has in mind. And uh, I loved her world. We worked back and forth to fine tune and, and, and make the um, script as, as uh, engaging as, as, as it could be. And then um, we really pulled out all the stops and had a real crew and, and, and everything. It was, it was a dream come true. My last films were just, you know, a uh, handful of people running around doing everything. And this was just sort of an army of people. And, and I think it shows, it's, it's a be it, everything looks beautiful. I'm not a um, uh, cinematographer, um, you know, so I'm not a, a lens person or a settings person and all that, you know, I, um, I really work with uh, some, some great people. And uh, Luke Harquillat was um, our um, director of photography and he just has beautiful eye and yeah anyway yeah and uh you mentioned bar harbor i you know i'm from north carolina but i've traveled to bar harbor before in mountain desert island just such mm -hmm. a beautiful place so uh, what was it like um kind of capturing the beauty of the environment and uh, working with your dp like you mentioned just such a gorgeous movie to look at visually so um what was the kind of the process in uh developing the visual style well, we really wanted it to be um, sort of when she's outside and she's in her element, uh, which you see a lot of, there are a number of scenes outside where she's foraging for mushrooms in, um, in the Bar Harbor area. And um, uh, yeah, in Mount Desert Island, uh, which is uh, Acadia National Park. We wanted those scenes to be extra lush. So it's almost like you're feeling the energy and her just feeling back. And then whenever she's out of that, out of that realm, you know, the colors aren't maybe quite as rich, um, you know, so you can actually feel how much in her element she is based on, you know, how we, uh, how we handle those shots. What is amazing is that all of the outdoor shots were shot in a very small area. And it was one of those, 
it's it's one of those types of woods and areas where you literally just turn another direction walk over a small little hill and it looks completely different Excellent. so um we just found this one magic spot yeah. pretty pretty cool definitely magic place and uh, working with your lead actress, Lacey Hannon, uh, from what I understand, she's worked with Clint Eastwood in the past. I think she had a small role in Jersey Boys. Um, yeah. So what was it like working with someone who's worked on massive productions like that? And what kind of insight was she able to bring to the table? Well, she, she was fantastic and incredibly down to earth. Um, she was a, it, it, it was wild. It, just put it this way before I worked with local actors and myself in, in, in my films and to work with someone who showed up absolutely prepared and focused with a vision of what her character was. Uh, it was, you know, when you work with a professional, I've heard this before, but when you work with professionals, all you have to do is just tell them what you have in mind and step back and let them do their thing. And that's, and that's exactly what, what she did. And, um, it was a joy. It was a joy. And she was very clear about, you know, what she thought about certain shots or um, whatever. She, she stayed in the zone when we were shooting. Um, what, what's, what is amazing, what was amazing to me, because I've never had this uh, experience and pleasure to, to work with real professionals before, actually, uh, is that when I was looking at the raw footage uh, for, for editing, there were moments where we're running around, like the, the camera's rolling in between shots. We're running around setting up lights and laughing and just going, oh, you, you almost forgot that. And, you know, we're all talking. And she was just, you know, her next shot was going to be her crying about something. So while we're doing all of this, she is just in the zone, absolutely focused as to what she's about to do. And, I mean, I appreciated her on set. But afterwards, I realized that there's a depth to the craft of acting that I, I had never really directly experienced before. So that was very cool. Yeah, and uh, you also brought in Hoyt Richards, which he is commonly known as the first male supermodel in the world. So how did you get him to be a part of this? And like, you know, just what was that experience like? It's, it's true. He is, he is legitimately the first male supermodel, international supermodel, but he, he's also, uh, and he's also a, uh, obviously a talented actor and a director and a screenwriter um, and also an activist uh, for a certain, uh, he, for uh, fighting against uh, cults and cult mind control, actually. Um, that is something that I've had an interest in also, uh, in the past. I wrote a short, uh, sorry, I wrote a romantic comedy screenplay a number of years ago, uh, about two people who fall in love as they try to save each other from their respective cult. And I had a, I have a cult, um, expert friend who got me in touch with Hoyt, who, like I said, works very passionately on this topic. And so we've just been over the years, just for screenwriting, have been talking and sending stuff back and forth. And this was just a fantastic uh, opportunity to, um, to, to work with him. And he was, he was beyond a pleasure to work with. He was great. Yeah, certainly. It looks like everybody that was involved in this had such a great time on set and really put so much uh, effort into it. So we're very appreciative of your film and at Real to Real, and we're thankful that to have you be a part of it. It's my pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, what does it mean for you to uh, have the film festival circuit for you to distribute films like this that otherwise might not get a wide audience? Well, this is uh, you mean in, in in our situation right now where everything's going virtual for the most part. Well, that and just in general, um, regardless of pandemic or not, but especially oh, yeah. the pandemic. Well, it's two, okay, so those are two, uh, two different situations. So I have found um, that go, uh, sending to festivals and attending festivals as much as possible, um, of course, you know, personal um, uh, budgets are, can constrain, you know, how often you can, can go to these things. But the more often that you can go to the festivals and meet your audience and your future audience, um, and also, uh, uh, appears who are you know other up and coming filmmakers and of course people of consequence producers and and managers and agents and and, and folks like that 
um, you know, just growing your friendship base uh, so you can learn from them, potentially work with them, um, and just gather wisdom about other people's personal experiences, who to work with, who not to work with, you know, all, all of that stuff. Uh, it, it's critical. It's critical. I, I've heard of a number of filmmakers who, you know, send them off, send their films off to festivals and they post their laurels, you know, it's just like official selection and that's all they do. They don't travel to them. And as much as you can, it's incredibly important to, to visit them. So I found them very, very helpful and influential. And um, yeah, I've met some amazing people that I know I'm going to work with or, or, or ask opinions from, you know, and advice from over the years. Now that it's a pandemic, and most or all of them are going virtual, you don't necessarily get that one-on-one, -on -one, but at the same time, hypothetically, um, or theoretically rather, these festivals might have a greater reach because now, you know, it's, um, now if I'm, I'm interested in, in, in attending yours, where I may or may not have been able to uh, because of travel or, or, or budgeting or, or whatever, um, I can, and I'd have more flexibility of what films I want to see and when, which is exciting and, uh, and, and a really good opportunity. So in this situation, uh, my work and other people's work might be able to be distributed more to more people because uh, it's, everything's going virtual. Um, but the downside is, is that I won't necessarily get that one-on-one -on -one in a bar after a showing of something, you know, with, with some other filmmakers. It's, it's, uh, but there might be other opportunities that pop up out of it. Um, you know, things evolve, we, you know, and, and what might be exciting is that because everybody's doing that this year, uh, having the festivals virtual, maybe going forward, it might be a typical, you know, if, if this goes on for a year or two or, um, that maybe it'll be something where, yeah, we have a physical location, but since we have, you guys have all the, the video files, it'll also be virtual. So everybody can also see them. So this might be beneficial in the long run, uh, for, for filmmakers. We'll, we'll just have to see. And, uh, moving on from this project, do you have any other things that you're working on, um, uh, in filmmaking or just, if so, what are you hoping to take from the lessons you learned in this one and apply to your future filmmaking career? Uh, right now I'm uh, working on a short film, a, a dark comedy about white privilege uh, titled The Privilege is Mine. And uh, it's something that I've been thinking about for a while and I think it's important to put it out there. Um, not so much to put out another white person's point of view into the world but more share um, what is what could be typical internal uh, white experiences in a world that's opening up to us that we need to be paying better attention to. But what are what are the internal processes and thought processes that are going on that are both unfortunate but true, and to put it out there and make it funny might allow folks to sort of grow and and accept yeah you know we all watch those same tv shows in the 70s and 80s and we might have that programming <clears throat> inside so let's let's take a look at it and challenge it a bit so uh that's that's uh, one thing i'm doing i'm also working on an animated short film uh called ninja chiropractor which is exactly what you imagine it is and it placed really well at the Austin Film Festival as a short script. So I'm excited about that one. And, um, and I'm also rewriting that uh, dark romantic comedy about uh, the people in cults falling in love. Um, you know, I wrote it a number of years ago. It did really well in the contests, but it, 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 needs, it needs a freshening up. They do get stale over time. And you, you know, it's very interesting how you, you, know, you write something eight years ago and in the same way you might see a movie from eight years ago and go, uh, you don't really joke about that anymore, but you didn't know at the time or you weren't aware at the time, it's, you know, scripts can age that way also. So I'm, I'm gonna be working on that. Awesome, well, we're definitely looking forward to it and uh, hope to have you back at Real to Real sometime in the uh, years in the future. I 
hope so. Sincerely hope so. And I, and I hope to, uh, to, to meet you in person, person someday at, at one of these festivals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully uh, the pandemic is cleared out by then. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's the prayer. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if people want to keep up with your work, whether it be through social media or a website you have, where can they find you? Uh, I'm at jimpicarello.com, and I don't know if you'll put it up, but it's um, the spelling is has a silent I, so it's J I M P I C A R I E L L O dot com, and it's the same uh, on um, Facebook. It's just slash you know Facebook slash Jim Picarello, and same with Twitter, Twitter slash Jim Picarello. Awesome. Well, Jim, really appreciate your time today on Real Conversations. And uh, that's Jim Piccarello, the director of the Mushroom Huntress. And we appreciate everything he's done and uh, looking forward to seeing him as a part of the festival in, in one way or another. So thanks, Jim, for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. And uh, Thomas Manning with the Real to Real Film Festival. We'll see you guys next time on Real Conversations. <laughs>